another line coming down. How many places do they intersect? And it's exactly one place. Okay. So the 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 um, offshoot from this is that in terms of solutions, an intersection intersection means solutions. Mm -hmm. So if you have one place that they intersect, you have one solution. Got it. And there's nothing more to say about that. This is a little bit of review from maybe a previous uh, uh, class here. I think I've done this either in pre-algebra or a little bit in geography. Right. Yeah. So it's good when it when it's uh, it's familiar to you. Now they give you the, the next question says. What kind of system is it called? Now I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do some searching here because I want to make sure that we use the right language because your instructor wants certain words here. So if there is a solution, okay. Um, solutions, okay. So that your instructor calls this an independent system. independent and the reason is is the the um they are non-parallel lines and there is some x y where they intersect There are some other words, but they're not emphasizing them here, um, which is okay. That just means less to uh, less to sort of jot down. All right, question three, looking at example two. It's pretty pretty. Uh... All right, so I got to go back up and grab the graph for example two. All right, here is example, let me double check. Yep, there it is. All right, so how many points of intersection are there? So they're saying this is the same line. So it's, it's as if you've drawn a line and then the other line is right on top of it. Right. So these, these intersect everywhere. So there's multiple solutions. Yeah, in fact, there's infinite solutions. There's a place on every, there's a place on every, uh, every point on the graph is an intersection point. Got it. And so that's, that's something to consider. Um, so how many intersection points are there? Uh, infinite, how many solutions are there? Infinite. You can either use that infinity symbol, symbol usually is okay. This down here at the bottom means infinity, um, but uh, it's up to you, up to you. Usually, usually everything is accepted here. All right, question four is what kind of system is it called? This is all kind of uh, vocabulary. Uh, these are called deep, dependent systems, not independent, dependent. Let me, uh, let me, uh, Trying to see if your instructor actually writes this word. Yes, there it is. Your instructor actually does say dependent. Dependent. Right. And um, you, know, you could say that they like we, you know, it's kind of repeating what we already said. They intersect at every point, every point along the graph. Give me like one second, please. Okay, so now that you've stopped and think, stop and think, you've done some thinking, uh, we can now actually answer some of, of these problems. All right. Uh, one through four. 
All right, so next one is, is graphing a system. Uh, let me see how they want you to show step. All right. Um, hmm, okay. All right, so the first question here, when, they, when it says to graph here, your system, this is number five. Uh, it wants you to show your work. And, you know, the, there's a couple of ways to graph graph lines. Okay. The uh, first way, well, I'm sorry, let me back up here. It says you can graph these in Desmos, which, which we will do, but you still need to show your work. So uh, like what I would like to do is show our work and then graph these in Desmos. And then that'll, that'll have, you know, give us some information uh, about what we're looking for. So the first thing to do when to, to graph is to it's to solve for y. Like that's your first approach. Okay. All right. So so for example here, this first equation x minus y equals minus five. We're going to solve for y. So to do that, I'm first going to subtract x from both sides. And then it's it's a preference to put that x x in front. So it's minus y equals minus x minus five, like that. Okay. And then you divide both sides by negative one. And you're dividing everything by negative one because you want y completely by itself. Y has to be completely by itself. Nothing more on that side. Can't even be a negative. N dividing by negative changes the sign of everything x plus five. Okay. And now, now what you're supposed to remember here is that there's a slope and a B value. A slope and a B value. The slope is the number in front of X. In front of, we say, mean to the left. There's really a one there. So the slope is one or one over one. The B value is, is five. All right. Does that, does that remind you? Is that... Uh, like, do you remember that from earlier in the course, previous course? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. So from here, what I'd like you to do is graph this, y equals 1x plus 5. And then I also want you to graph the original x minus y equals minus 5. And I want you to see that they are, they are the same. Okay. So if you go to your Desmos, do that, make sure that they are exactly the same. Okay. Do I write a one X or just X? It's gonna be the uh, same. either one. Either one. One X plus five or X plus five, it doesn't matter. And then X minus Y equals minus five. Okay. They're parallel to each other. That's what I can tell already. They, they should not be parallel. They should be right on top of each other. Oh, okay. I think I, let me just, there we go. Now they might be on top of each other. Okay. And that's, that's all I want to see. So go ahead and erase that second one for okay. now. Okay. So now we're going to look at the other equation. 2y equals minus 2 minus 2x. 2y equals minus 2 minus 2x. And again, we want to solve for y. Okay. And to do that, we divide by two because there's a two in front of the y, you divide everything by two. So y equals minus one, minus one x or minus x. Now, if you prefer, and I, I do prefer to do this, I like to put the negative or the x in front, negative one x minus one. That's just a preference here. The slope and the b value, again, the slope is negative one, the b value is is negative one. All right. So I'd like you to now graph this one along with the previous one. Okay. Then you should see them intersect. Yeah, I can see them intersecting. What is your intersection point? A negative three comma two. Yes. So your your instructor wants to see a snip of that graph, or you can draw it by hand. 
exactly what what you just as well as identifying that point that is your solution where they where they intersect so you want to say that x equals minus three and y equals two okay All right, so um, that's it for question number one. Um, the approach that we took here was to solve for y. That that always works. It's not always the most efficient way, but it does always work. So we'll look at the next system, number six, and uh, kind of decide how we want to solve that one as well. All right, so number, wait, we're up to, yes, we're up to six. All right, so do you see that the second equation is already solved for y? Yeah. Already solved for y, and that's good. We don't have to do anything with that one, okay? The first one though, we need to solve for y, okay? So I'm actually gonna kind of rewrite, I'm gonna put 2y plus six on the left and, and x on the right. So it's just a rewrite step, I'm not changing anything, just, just kind of rearranging how we're, how we're looking at it. To solve for y, we look at the side with y. Your focus is on that side with the variable. And you, you say, okay, well, what is what is keeping y from being by itself? There's a two. There's and a two in front of the y multiplying it. What about this six right here? Yeah, that's two. What, what's the math operation though? Um, what's that we're symbol? Gonna, we're gonna first subtract the six to where? Yes. X is. That's right. So it becomes 2y equals x minus 6. And then from here, divide by you two. Divide, divide by 2. Now you're dividing everything by 2. And that's where maybe it's a good idea to put a 1 in front of the x. So you can see, okay, yeah, it's not just x. It's, it's 1. So we got 1 half x minus 3. Right. Okay. All right. So now I want you to graph this line. And then this other one that's already solved for y from the beginning, graph those in Desmos and uh, tell me tell me what you see. Tell me where they intersect. They intersect at the points negative two comma negative four. Okay. And so you want to get a graph, you want to get a picture of that graph. You want to um, identify that intersection point and write and write the ordered pair as well. Okay. That's what your teacher is uh, is looking for here. So um, give them what they want. You know, you get the grade you want. So, yeah. All right. So let me know when uh, when you've got that down, and we'll move on to the next question. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. By the way. Say that again. Oh, I'm ready for number seven. All right. Let me get that one snipped in and we'll uh, we'll get started on it. So yet another system. Seven's a system. Eight's a system. Nine is the system. Okay. Lots and lots of systems. All right. Okay. So here we go. Same thing. So notice the first equation is already solved for, for y. That's great. We don't have to do anything with that equation. We're going to take the second equation, x minus 2y equals 4, and we're going to solve, solve for y. So first thing is to, is to sub get rid of the x, subtract the x from both sides. Mm -hmm. And then I, I always like to put it in, in, in front. So it'll look like this, minus 2y, that, that traction goes with the negative, with the, the 2 negative x plus four. All right. And then divide everything by negative two, everything. Not a choice, everything gets divided by negative two. It's really a negative one in front of the x. So the two negatives cancel and you get one half x minus two. All right. Okay, so go ahead and graph. You just got to be careful that you actually remember to graph the right ones. You want to graph this one, 
in red and this other one in red. And that way you'll see you know, two distinct lines. If you graph the same one, it'll look, it'll look the same on, on top there. Let me know when you uh, have an intersection point for that. All right, they intersect at zero comma negative two. Good, good. And there's a way to check your answer. Uh, maybe we'll get to that uh, in a future lesson or part of this lesson. Uh, but you actually always know whether you're right or not, which is, which is maybe a change from previous problems where we had no idea. Um, really? Right. Well, I am ready. So we can move on to the next one whenever you say so. Yeah, next one's got a little, a little more work to it. This is, the, I think this might be one of the fastest lessons we've ever done. Well, you know, you'd say that, and then if we get to the end here, might my, my well, All right. Um, what's graphs? I like graphs. All right. What I want you to do is try solving this first one for y, please. We've done a couple for you. This one's really similar to the last one that we did. Um, why don't you try solving this for uh, for y, please? Right. Okay, so we've got to get, we, wait, we, we can do, hold on. So that's three X. We, we can subtract three X to the other side. Yes, yes. To the, to the right. So we get negative Y equals negative three X plus six. Then we divide by negative one. Then we get y equals um, 3x minus 6. Now, if you're ever unsure, you can always graph the two of them and see that they're exactly the same. Yeah. Okay, but, I, but, but you do have it here. Good. Now, the next one's a little bit more involved. You have to first clear out the fraction on the left. Okay, so to clear out a fraction, you undo the fraction by multiplying by the denominator. Okay. So this becomes 3x minus y equals 6. And what do you notice about this one right here and this one right here? They're exactly the same. They're exactly the same. So when you, you don't even need to solve it. They're exactly the same. You probably should write it, though. Yeah. Now, you do have to graph it. You do have to graph them both and show that they are the same line. They're exactly the same. Okay, so the point they both intersect would be, wait, why does one of them, there's two different points for them. Say that one more time. So I, Put them in the graphs y equals 3x minus 1 and then y equals 3x minus 6. Why? why you said 3x minus 1. Where, where do you see that at? Oh, oops. Sorry. Let me just fix that real quick. There we go. They intersect uh, 2 comma 0. Nope. Um, there's some sort of disconnect we're having because you just agreed that they're exactly the same equation. Yeah. So if you if you create one equation and you have another equation that's exactly the same, you should only see one line. Yeah, I do see one line. I just fixed it. Okay. So that, so then they, the, it's, it's like that example we did up here, example two, where they're the same line. Yeah. So, so what did we say about 
same line? How, how many places do they intersect? They intersect everywhere and they have infinite solutions. That's right. So we want to first say that. And then I'm looking to see if your instructor does this. Yes, your instructor does. Okay, we will do that in a moment. So get that graph down and we will, we will, uh, so there's a little bit more, like you're right. It is infinite solutions. That's totally correct. Okay. Now the, let me know when you get your graph down. There's just a tiny bit more to do on this problem. All right. I'm ready. All right, fantastic. So the solution is always X comma Y, okay? But this time there's a lot of X comma Ys that work, okay? And so what, what, the, what the solution requires you to do is to take this right here and put it in, in for Y. So your solution looks like this, X comma three X minus six. And this, this may be the first time you're seeing this, so it's gonna look very awkward. And what it means is if you pick an X value, like pick your favorite X value, like three, if you put three in for X, you get another output. If you put two in for X, you get another output. Okay, but this is how you present your answer. Notice that Y depends, depends on X. The, the Y value, which is three X minus six, you get after picking an X value, you plug that in for X. Okay. It's a little awkward, a little weird, but maybe that's the only one. Yeah, let me just show this graph into my work so just the okay. teacher can see it. Okay, I'm ready for number nine. All right, so number nine is a little bit different than the others here. We're going to start by um, we're going to start by solving this one for y. Could you do that for us, please? Yes. Y equals negative x plus four. Good, really good. And we know that that's a line. It's a line that kind of looks like this. Yeah. Roughly. Now the other one's different. What's different about the other one is this right here. What kind of, how would we describe this graph? And, uh, and if you're not sure, if you're not sure, why don't you graph it? Tell me what you see. Sure, I'll graph it. Just... Okay. Oh, it's a it's a frowny face, basically. Okay, so it's it's some sort of quadratic, and, yeah. and uh, yeah, I think you'll see something like this, roughly. I don't know where it intersects, but yeah, it's a quadratic. Okay, and uh, there's not really anything you can do to um, solve it when you're doing it by graphing. Let me just double check here. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, the the, the the solution here is to graph this line and then this other quadratic and see where they intersect. They should intersect in two points is my guess without, without seeing the graph. Do they intersect in two places? Mm, when I look at the graph, like on Desmos, I don't see where they intersect. Okay, let me take a look here. Maybe I wrote something wrong. Yeah, I think I did write something wrong, hold on. Okay. You, you you said everything right. You said it's a frowny face. Yes, it's going it's going uh, upside down. Intersected. Uh, it's four, comma zero. Is there any other place that they intersect? Yes. Zero, comma four. That's right. 
So yeah. they intersect two places. Yes. So what's, what's kind of a fun exercise is to think about a line and a quadratic and what are the possibilities. And one of them is, well, they could hit twice, right? They could hit right there and there. Yeah. But they could also hit once. Now, imagine that's once. Or they could miss altogether. Mm -hmm. And you can you can actually do this with a bunch of different shapes. You know, it's a really actually fun in class exercise, but you know, we don't we don't have that luxury of time to be able to do that. But it would be it would be a good thing to do to kind of see, you know, okay, well, what actually happens here. All right, so we're on to the apply your knowledge. Do you feel ready to apply your knowledge? Yep, pretty sure okay. I feel ready. All right, so the good thing is, is you can you can graph again, uh, but there is there's a little bit more setup here. We have to actually write the equation. Ah, lovely. Yes. So it says in Lily's garden there are five rose bushes. The first year, each year she adds two new rose bushes. She has twenty tulip plants. The first year and loses three each year. When will the number of rose bushes equals the number of tulip plants? Hint, let X equal the number of years since the first year, and Y equal the total number of plants. Okay. So you have to come up with an equation for the roses and then an equation for the tulip. Okay. Okay. So the roses, how much, how much, or how many is she starting with? Five. Five. And what's happening each year? They're going up or down and by what amount? She adds two new rose bushes a year. So plus two X. Now what's going on with the tulips? How many is she starting with? She is starting with 20 and loses three, so minus three X. Yes. Okay, so one of these graphs, and you're gonna you're gonna do this, is gonna go down, and the other's gonna go up, and there you go. All right, let me just put that in the graph real quick. So go ahead and graph that, and uh, see what see where they intersect. Uh, three comma 11. All right. So sometimes you have to put that in context. Like what is X referring to? It's the, it's the number of years since the first year. So basically they're saying three years later, three years later, the number of roses will equal the number of tulips. All right. All right. So I think that's everything. Um, just please double check that you, you think you have everything down. Um, it seems to be worse if we don't get it all in the first, get all the stuff written down the first time. You feel like you've properly answered every question? Yeah, I do. Great. I will be shown as well. So, yeah. I'm just taking the photos into cam scanner.
All right, I'm ready for lesson, what lesson, 30? Yeah. All right, let's let's do it. All right, so another, yeah, group of four, stop and think, but uh, we're continuing on with the previous lessons. It actually has a nice, nice, con nice continuation here. So it says solve the system using substitution. Substitution means to, to replace. Yeah. So typically you wanna see that one of the variables is already solved for. Now, in the first equation here, it's almost solved for y. Could you solve that for y for us, please? Sure. y equals 4? No, sorry, 3. Y equals three, good. You divide by two, divide by two. Now, you take that value of Y and you put it back into the other equation for Y. Now, my preference is to substitute in parentheses. So it's X minus five times three equals minus 10. Right? X equal, not equals, I'm sorry. X minus 15 equals negative 10. So yeah, so to solve this, you have to multiply five and three, X minus 15, like you said, and then you add 15 to both sides, X equals five. Yeah. Do I have to put these in a graph? It does not say that. So, but what, what, what you do want to do is present your answer. You want to say that X comma Y is five comma, Three. You want to indicate your your answer. Okay. All right. Number two. Number two. So these are the the first few uh, are substitution, the method you learned in a previous class. And um, let's see here. So this time, this time when you solve for, for y, the um, value of y is, um, how do I say, it's like, it, it's already solved for, but it's not in terms of a number. It's, a, it's an equation. So you have to take everything for y and put it in for y in the other equation. And again, really, really important to do that in, in parentheses. So it looks like this, 12x minus two times six X plus two, notice I'm putting all that in parentheses, minus four. Okay. All right, so now, now um, you have to solve for X. To do that, you distribute this negative two to both. So we have minus 12x minus four equals minus four, 12x minus 12x minus four. What do you notice about the 12x's? What happens here? They're all gonna equal zero. Yeah, so it, it ends up being minus four equals minus four. Or if let's just say you added four to both sides, which you could, you get zero equals zero. Everything equals zero in this problem. Well, you gotta be careful because this this is a this is not the same as x equals zero, y equals zero. This means infinite solutions. Mm -hmm. And from our from our 
previous lesson, that means these are, are dependent. Got it. Yeah. All right. Um, so now, what does that mean in terms of how to answer it? If you recall, we have to write it as x comma y. So what we really have to do is, is replace y with something. Well, that something is the 6x plus 2. Oh. So it, it's a little awkward, but it, it, it's, it's x comma 6x plus 2. little awkward situation. Love yeah. that. All right. So ready to move on to number three, by the way. All right. So number three here, solve the system. You know what? We're going to do number five next because it is a substitution problem, just like we've been doing here. And I'd like you to give it a try on your own. Okay. So you're, so you're gonna take this 2.5X and put it in for Y. X equals four. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's uh, so when we put X so here, here, let's just say that's correct. I'm sure sure you did great. That actually does look right. Um, to find Y, you have to take that value of four and you can put it into either equation. But why not put it in the equation where Y is already solved for? Yeah. Okay. All right. So there's your answer. X comma Y is four comma 10. All right, good job on that. So let's go back to number three. Okay, so new approach here. It's saying to solve the system using elimination. Elimination means that you are choosing a variable to get rid of. Oh, lovely. Okay. And in this case, you have some options. One of the options is to just add the equations together. Add the equations together. Now, keep in mind that first equation, there is no x. It's almost like there's zero x. Mm -hmm. What is zero x plus one x? Okay. What happens when you add the zero x plus this one x? How many X's do you have? Uh, you have, wait, what? I'm sorry. You Zero X plus one X. How many? You Zero only X have plus one X. One X, good. Now next to it, you have plus five Y minus five Y. Oh, that's just zero. That's zero equals, what is 20? plus negative 10. Positive 10. Positive 10. So there you have it, x is 10. Okay. So. Now, normally, normally you would put that back into one of the equations, but because the other equation is already basically solved for y, you can solve for y by just dividing both sides by, by five. So y equals four.
All right. So make sure you write your answer. Um, you may want to double check the notes to see if there's a certain way they want the answer presented, but um, this is usually pretty good here. All right, number four. Solve the system using elimination again. So your, your first choice is to try to add the equations, which in this problem does not work because x is not different than 12. Negative 2y is the same as negative 2y. But we can also multiply an equation. Mm -hmm. So for example, you could multiply. I'm going to do it for this first equation. I'm going to multiply the first equation by negative 1. And I'm going to put the result down here below it. Minus 1x plus 2y equals negative 2. All right, and now our focus, our focus is on this, this new system right here in this box. Can you add those equations together vertically? Sure. Okay. okay. So 12x minus 1x will be 6x. Nope, try again. Oh, I'm sorry, 11x. Good. 2y plus 2y is 0. Negative 2y plus 2y is 0. Yep. And then you have minus 9. And minus 2. That will be negative 11. All right. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to solve for x. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to use one equation or the other and try to solve for y. I'm going to step away for 30 seconds, but I will be right back. OK. All right, I am back. Did you get a value for X? Yeah, I got zero. Nope, you're dividing by 11. Oh, hmm. and I must have messed up somewhere. Sorry. So what is negative 11 divided by 11? Negative 100 and, oh my God. You're dividing here. Oh, wait. Negative 11 divided by 11. Or how about just 11 divided by 11? Oh, that would be one, so negative one. Yeah, negative one, good. And then we can use, we can actually use either equation to solve for y. I'm just going to pick the first one. I don't really have a great reason for it, but we're going to solve for y now um, using this other equation. So you take that negative one and you put it in for x. Okay. Okay, so now you add one to both sides to undo that you get negative 2y equals 3. And then this time when you divide by negative 2, you get y equals fraction. It's an improper fraction. It's a decimal. That's OK. It's OK. Really, no big deal. Yeah. It's still, it still is an answer. And it's still a correct answer. Like It doesn't have to always be perfect. So. Your solution here is x comma y equals, and you got to use that x value, negative one comma negative three halves. All right. All right. So it would actually really help me to just stop two minutes early today. I got a really tight schedule.